24 7 365 days a year operation out of here we have room for seven families and it's it's full all the time with a waiting list of families to get back in so you know the profile of a homeless person has changed a lot uh, you might think a homeless person was a single male about 50 years old uh, undereducated with a drinking problem and obviously those homeless are still there but it's more and more families nowadays and it's it's not uh, it's not necessarily alcohol related uh, it's you, know, you lose your job you lose your house what are you gonna do and there's a lot it gets a lot of pressure on your mind a lot of stress well, the Salvation Army is number one a church and we believe that social work is a big part of our church and so we have a 69 bed shelter emergency shelter and we also have a community lunch program and we also have a food shelf another thing we have is is a lot of youth programs Wednesday nights are big youth night here and we We'll have, we, I think last year we probably had over 900 attendants to that. And it's not just uh, kids that are staying in our shelter, it's also kids throughout the community that are coming into the program. To, to bring anything in, you know, bring it, bring it to us first. We have a thrift store in town, but we'd prefer that you brought it to us because if we don't have a lot of storage place, but we'll take the stuff that we can use immediately and then we'll take the rest of the stuff to the thrift store. So it ultimately gets there. But if it comes through us first, maybe there's a few items that we can pick that can really help. This is our clinic where we have open several times, uh, several times a week. And we get some help from the doctors at Centro Care will come over. But mostly what uh, Classes like St. Ben's Nursing or uh, St. Cloud Tech or St. Cloud State will have nursing classes and they'll come over here and actually uh, take care of the area. This is our, the shelter, the upstairs of the shelter, and we're divided kind of two ways. The men stay upstairs, the women and children will stay downstairs. If a, if a family comes in that's a father and a mother and kids, the mother and the children will stay downstairs. The father will sleep upstairs and spend his day with the kids downstairs. If a father with no mother and kids come in, he can stay with the kids on the lower level. We have a lot of unrelated people in this building, so it's obviously safety first. When the first 72 hours when they check in, number one, they would get their kids enrolled into a school. And after that, they would sit down with their caseworker and lay out a plan. While I'm staying here, this is what I'm going to accomplish. And then we ask them to meet with their caseworker at least once a week to make sure they're, they're on their plan. Yeah, however they want to lay the, lay the beds out. And like I say, you know, it's not overly crowded, but you know, everything you own is in this room, so you're not able to bring a lot of stuff into the shelter. If, if you're in 90 days and you don't have a job, you don't have a place to live, but you're working hard at it, we're not gonna ask you to leave. It's, uh, on the other hand, if you're not working hard at it, we just soon find out in the first week rather than 90 days out. This is our IT room, and all of these computers are donated to us. So as we get new computers, uh, we're able to upgrade in here. Uh, these are available to anyone that lives here for doing a job search or housing search or uh, Social Security information like that. We do have a couple of computers we make available to the kids because the kids are in school, everything is done on the computer. So whether it's homework or research, we make it available. Uh, this is the main check-in area. And even, there's, even if they're staying here for extended periods of time, we do ask them to leave middle of the day. For one thing, just to not be sitting around their room. But other, you are to be looking for a job and looking for a place to live. This is our food shelf area. And about 70% of the food that is here is, is donated to us. We do buy food a couple times a month from Second Harvest, Start of the Cities, and we do buy it at a very good rate. And that's why I was mentioning that sometimes it's better to just give us the cash. We can buy five, six times as much food, and, uh, and then we can buy what we're short of. Full-service kitchen, full-service dishwashing in the back. The majority of the 
people that work here are volunteers putting in the time. I've got one group of women, five women that have been coming in on Wednesdays and Thursdays for close to 20 years. When we first, first started this end from this bay down, that was our chapel. And we had the folding chairs and a little altar in the front. So when we were able to move into the new chapel, we were able to expand the, the eating area here. I give a lot of tours of the facility and people that have lived here their whole lives and have known the Salvation Army just say, you know, we had no idea. We really had no idea that all of this is going on in this facility. Mm -hmm.